Hello, my name is Robert Arlinghaus. I'm a professor of integrative fisheries management at Humboldt University of Berlin, Germany. I'm also working at the Leibniz Institute of Freshwater Ecology and Indian Fisheries. And I study the sustainability of fisheries. So how can we make our fish stocks more sustainable? So I was born in West Germany and in 1989, when the Berlin Wall fell, I was actually in school, probably was fishing, because at that time I was actually pretty young and didn't really realize what was going on. This project to involve anglers to co-produce knowledge for sustainable fisheries with anglers really breaks two walls. The first one is between science and society. So we left the ivory tower, we worked intensively together with fishery stakeholders to increase their competencies for improving their ability to manage fish stocks sustainably. The second wall that we broke is between nature conservation and fisheries interests. There are deep divides often between those two camps and we could show that you can actually harmonize those two and that anglers very often are nature conservationists. So we empower them to also think about how to improve biodiversity, how to conserve threatened species. The biggest challenges, of course, were to get into the stakeholder groups, to get acceptance and get their trust. And we did this by actually working with them for many years before we actually started our experiments. Our project is titled co-production of knowledge and it means to increase the competencies of anglers by working together and doing experiments in their waters. The biggest reason to introduce this project was that we as scientists were usually publishing scientific papers in the English literature and in Germany no angler and angling club would read them. So we would produce knowledge that was not transferred to the practical world of fisheries management. And therefore we decided as a team that we need to work together with anglers, do experiments together, communicate that knowledge using various forms and means that are tailored to the target groups. The biggest surprises that we had was that initially the anglers considered us scientists pretty much as experts. So it took some time to actually tell them, look, you and us both know a little, we have different knowledge bases and we have to work together to learn how the certain fisheries management actions works. What makes this project unique really is that we work together with anglers. We mark fish, we improve the habitats, we jointly sample the fish, we interpret the data together, and therefore the scientific knowledge is directly interpreted and realized and integrated by the angler communities. That's really unique. In addition, we work with experts to produce other forms of science communication, such as comics, movies, podcasts. We had publications, we did a road show and a series of seminars and thereby we reached not only anglers but also policy makers, decision makers at national and international level. I think that's quite unique and that's also why society benefits from this project because the anglers are not just users but also managers of the lakes and rivers and many of us depend on high quality rivers and lakes for their own recreation, for swimming, for bathing, etc. So the competencies that we give the anglers to improve the ecological quality of rivers and lakes at the end also benefits society. And what does my friend, my family or my mother think about this project? I suggest we ask them. Hey, Gala and Henry, I've published a new paper about pike ecology and fisheries. What do you think? So what I do like about Robert's work is even as a citizen who cares about environment, it's interesting to understand things about fishing management um, and he makes it very accessible for people like me. Well, given the complexity of ecological relationships, it's often not possible to have just one clear answer to questions that stakeholders, that anglers, fishers have to us. So sometimes I have to say, well, I don't know, or it could be this or that, and this might create quite uncomfortable situations sometimes. As well, there is, of course, a certain fraction of people that are very critical of science. They consider it a threat. They feel that whenever you do science, there might be a constraint coming up to fisheries practice. And this will, in some situations, of course, keep me awake because I really like to work with people to empower them and to make uh, solutions that are better for all. My kid's dream was to become the world's best angler. That didn't come true. And the reason is that I really suck at fishing. 
So I'd rather become a theoretician. I talk about fish. It's much easier than catching them. <laughs>